here's the same slide from the end of the last segment and the point of those boiling point numbers is not that you would need to know them but the fact that they are different for these two molecules is really the basis for giving them different names and considering them to be different substances um, despite the fact that they have a lot in common as far as their atoms and it turns out the more carbons you have in an alkane the more possibilities there are for isomers this next slide shows the situation for pentane five carbons and twelve hydrogens there's three different ways to connect all of those atoms so that the octet rule is satisfied across the board and pentane normally refers to the case in which the carbons are all in sequence but isopentane is kind of like the isobutane it has one of those five carbons branching off the middle of that chain and finally the one on the far right it was the most recent one to be discovered so neopentane was uh, the name given to it neo is a prefix that means new and again these boiling points are different confirming that these are actually different substances and sometimes isomers can be very similar in substance in, in their properties to each other sometimes they can be very different and that is uh, a big deal in organic chemistry well uh, we could keep adding little prefixes to identify all the different isomers of a given molecular formula but that's going to get out of hand pretty quickly because as this next slide shows if we go up to uh, larger numbers of carbons the number of possible isomers gets really large icosane is the 20 carbon alkane and look at that over 336,000 ways to connect those atoms not that those have all been created or identified but mathematically it's possible to have that many so as it says here chemists needed a more systematic way to identify and distinguish isomers so that once we learn some rules we could look at a structure that we've never seen before and put an appropriate name with it or given the name be able to draw out all the atoms and show how they're connected and this uh, is not only good for alkanes it's a system that we're going to see throughout organic chemistry and uh, IUPAC there uh, is the acronym that is used to identify this naming system. Uh, IUPAC is actually a committee of chemists that meets. Uh, they f are from countries all around the world and they decide on official ways to put names with organic structures and we're going to learn a few rules for doing that for alkanes. Um, I've ad adopted or amended these rules a little bit from the way they are in chapter 2 of your book but examples of using these rules are given um, throughout the chapter and we're gonna want to have a lot of practice in doing this most of the homework problems from chapter two uh, deal with either drawing a structure from the name or vice versa or else identifying whether or not compounds are isomers or not and so uh, that's gonna be a good skill to have well when we do draw out alkanes generally the longest chain of carbons is drawn horizontally although that ha doesn't have to be the case but we want to distinguish that longest chain of carbons called the parent chain from the branches and the fancy name for branches is substituent and so some of the carbons are part of the parent chain others are part of substituents or branches off of that chain we will see that names oftentimes have prefixes like di and tri or tetra if we have two or three or four of a particular substituent and um, the name uh, officially is going to include one of those alkane names to identify what we have in the parent chain so as we go to different chapters we'll see different types of substituents but they are in many cases treated the same way as what we will do here in this chapter so it's really important to get this uh, these rules down and be able to use them for alkanes and then we can modify these rules and add to them as we go along when we encounter oxygens or halogens other atoms that show up in organic compounds <laughs>